So my name is Keith Powers. I'm also a candidate for the 4th Council District. Thank you guys for having me. I was a last minute addition, so I get the written name tag, but I <laughs> appreciate you guys giving me the same audience. So I grew up just about 10 blocks from here in Stivestown, Peter Cooper. So I remember the East Village when it was cool, I guess, and when it was hip, and before it got expensive for a lot of people to live here, and the people who really were the fabric of the East Village and made it sort of the place where it was a destination for people to come for the arts and culture. So I watched sort of the transition myself, and uh, in terms of the question about good neighbors, I agree, with, I agree with Jeff, which is you guys are good neighbors, no question about it. On the question of gentrification and tackling gentrification, it's, a, it's prices and affordability. So we have to tackle on the, on the real estate side and the business side, the, the question of how to preserve businesses and, and independent theater spaces, art spaces. Uh, on the, 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 the side of housing, we also have to make it affordable for people to live here. The East Village should be a place where people can continue to live here and grow and raise families and so forth. So I'll take both of those. On the, on the cultural space, uh, question. I think it's partially a land use and, and zoning question. I think we can incentivize more cultural space when we're using the land use process. I think we can uh, create special, we have, we have benefits and density benefits already that exist. If you build a school, a community facility, if you do all sorts of other things, I think we can really strengthen uh, the density bonuses around creating arts and cultural space put it at an affordable rate, and we can also give things like tax breaks to, to developers for also building the kind of space that we're looking for. So I got 30 seconds. So, um, so I, think that's a, I think that's a big part of it. Uh, we also have to drive down prices around the way places where people live. Uh, one, preserve good affordable housing, like the rent regulated apartment I grew up in. We have to keep it rent regulated. We have to create actual new affordable housing that's actually affordable. We can't make affordable housing, call it that, and then people can't afford it once they are ready to sort of have a family and grow. So real affordable housing. And then on small businesses, I think these state, I'll leave it at that. I have a small business plan. I'll talk to you guys about it later. Thank you. Yeah. Raise your hands if you are willing to be a co-sponsor to Ben Kalis' City Spaces Initiative to create a searchable database for of unused or underutilized city-owned spaces. Thank you very much. Okay. Raise your hands if you will clearly and visibly list your stances on issues facing indie theater and performing arts on your web campaign's website and literature. <laughs> Raise your hands if you support expanding the theater subdistrict fund to include arts organizations with budgets below $250,000 a year. Uh, you support the promotion of indie theater to the more than 61 million visitors coming to New York City every year. <laughs> you can commit to working with the League to create new non-traditional spaces suitable for indie theater performances in your district. Uh, you support campaign finance reform and getting money from uh, getting money from PACs, super PACs, or special interests out of political campaigns at all levels. You support New Yorkers for Culture and Arts request to increase the funding by $40 million in the city's budget. I'm going to go even further. I'm going to say that you know I think we have to actually provide real incentives. I think that even not just encouraging them to do it, but actually putting things into the zoning code and into our tax our, our tax laws that act property tax laws, which the city does control, to actually incentivize it. I think we have to go further than just sort of asking them to do it. I think we actually have to go out as a city council members and do it. So uh, I think that when we are doing the land use and zoning process, I think we can really we always do these density bonuses. We always do we bring these rezoning to us and, and developers ask us for things and we ask for things back and I think actually having in the zoning code and also as, as council members and council candidates thinking seriously about how to use our land use process to incentivize uh, cultural space we, uh, we like all the stuff that we put in, as it does, but also making cultural space at, at the front of, prior, of a priority in terms of what we ask for when they build space. I think that's one. And then also really looking at our property tax code about whether there are other incentives we can give to build, uh, to build affordable housing, but also to build space in the bottom of it that can be cultural and art space. So I think we can even do more than encourage. I think we can require or at least incentivize. Um, the entire issue of affordable housing, I can talk for an hour 
know her about, but I do want to say, um, as we're creating this live workspace, we have to make sure that we're creating good affordable housing in New York City. Uh, I will go back to what I said earlier, which is that driving the prices down of our, and creating real affordable housing has to be a priority for the city, the mayor and city council for the next four, eight, 10, 12, and 20 years. We have to create both short-term and long-term affordable housing. We have to look at strengthening tenant organizations, strengthening the existing housing stock we have, and we have to actually get real about building affordable housing that's affordable for people, not something we pretend is affordable. Thank you. Thank you, and again, I, I agree. Thank you guys for being here. I know that uh, you could be anywhere but tonight, but to be here and participate is a, a really big deal and, and appreciated by all of us. And I have to say congratulations to all the candidates because it's a lot to get up here and to, to run, so congrats to everybody who's, who's taken the risk. So thanks again. My name is Keith Powers. Uh, I look forward to talking to you guys after this, but I, I would obviously seek your support here and ask if you're, if you're looking for a campaign to volunteer for it. So somebody, you live in the fourth, to so please say, take a look at Keith Powers at NYC. Uh, I'm very committed to the arts. I, in my prior job, uh, we helped establish the Department of Education's Arts Education Committee. I've sp we had worked on legislation around the Council of Arts. Um, I uh, uh, am actually should say I am being supported by Council Member Ben Kalos, who has your legislation on the city spaces, and I'm very proud of that. I think Ben knows we can work together around issues around uh, creating cultural arts space and, and supporting small businesses and entrepreneurs. So very proud of that. I will leave it at that. Thank you so much. I look forward to seeing you guys out there on the campaign trail. Thanks for being here tonight.